and, and I remember another time going on David Letterman. Um, you know, he wasn't really fond of David Letterman, you know, and, and so, you know, there's this thing at the end where, where you had to shake hands <laughs> at the end. And he told me while we were standing at the door, he says, um, he said, do you have the, the, the gunshot sample? And I was like, uh, I can get it. I mean, yeah. He said, okay. Now we're waiting at the door before we're getting ready to go on. And we've rehearsed it a certain way. And he just goes, okay, we're going to cut the, to go straight to the bridge. And then at the end, I'm going to do like this. And you do the gun sample. I'm going to shoot myself in the head. And then Coco is going to drag me off. Got it? And I said, yeah. And then he said, no mistakes. And I'm like going. <laughs> so it was like, and it was a song called Dolphin. And um, it was crazy, man, because I'm like, I'm sitting there trying to think there's a big chunk of samples now I got to cut out that I was used to playing one next to the other, next to the other, next to the other. And now I had to cut out a big chunk and jump straight to the bridge. And I'm sitting there thinking, where's the one start for the bridge? And I'm playing the song and I'm looking at the keys trying to think, which one is it? Which one is it? I don't know. And then I just hit the leap of faith. Boom. It just worked. I was like, oh my God, dude. It was just crazy because he would change it in an instant. And you had to just know where to, where to go to, man. And that's what he liked to do. He liked to have that kind of confidence that I'm going to drive it. I'm going to go this way. You guys come along with the ride, you know, come along. So that was that. That's how good that band was, and that he had the kind of confidence to just like do stuff like that. You're getting ready to go on a national TV show, one of the big David Letterman was one of the biggest shows on late night TV, and he tells you some stuff right before you get ready to go, and he changed the whole song up, man, right before we were getting ready to walk through the door, and then just flip it like that, and then the the history is the tape. I've seen it on YouTube myself, and I just I look at it and I just just shake my own head because I'm just like going, how did we do it? I, this, this was crazy. Because it's just like on the spot, we just changed it, changed the whole arrangement. We had rehearsed it that way for two weeks, you know, and then all of a sudden that right, it was crazy. And we do that all the time. And so Michael Bland gave me some good advice when I first came. He said, don't ever marry yourself to an arrangement. It will change. And it was the best advice I think he could have gave me because I, you know, one of your things is when you're learning something intently and you're like, you know, really, you know, trying to drive and press to get this right and get it, get it, get it. I'm married to it. I got it. I got it. And then press right before you say, okay, we're going to change it. And you're like, no, no, you can't change it. I, I spent a week learning that. No. And, and it's like, yeah, it's okay. We're going to do this. And it's just everything is out the window. It's out the window. And now it's a new part. We're going to make an edit and we're going to do it right before the show <laughs> and sound check. <laughs> So that was like, oh my God, this is crazy. So, we, but you got used to it and it made you better because you you start to really uh, hone in and pay attention. And you just remember the thing that's the last information that you've got. Business as usual until further notice. And then you make the change and then you have to lock that in. And he told me like, if you wanna stay, man, you gotta, I don't care what it is, hieroglyphics, whatever you gotta do. He says, if I gotta wait for you, I can't do my show. I gotta think about what you gonna do. And I don't want to think about what you're going to do. I want to think about what I'm going to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I had to I had to get it, man. And I didn't read music. And see, Tommy, you know, he read music. He just make a change in the chart. And then, boom, he just, that's, it's right. It's just like, boom, you know? And I think it, that was my Lazy Bones Jones thing. If I think I would learn how to read music and um, it would make life a lot easier. But it really sharpened my other skills, man. It just really sharpened my attention. And to make things like I, I was very attentive to, like, uh, uh, my new adjustments and, and changes and things like that. And it kind of spoils me now because I'm used to doing stuff kind of at the last minute and, you know, pressure, you know, man, we did a, We worked on a lot of pressure. And so I, you know, I just got used to that. I just got used to like in 10 minutes, you got to learn this song. We're going to go play it in front of all these people. And after learning it, working on it 10 minutes, we just going to learn it and we're going to play it. Everybody got it. Got it. Good. Bow. Cause he's going to remember his parts. He's got it down. It's already in his head. So he's got it. All you need to do is get your parts. So. Wow. Well, I think that's uh, a lot of the reason why you, you stayed around so long, being able to do that. That's amazing, Morris. And I think everyone's going to want to go back now and watch that Letterman again, knowing what you were talking about. 